Hello, it's been a while. I've been uh, out of action for about a month. Had a bit of a wobble mentally and all that. And it all went a bit peak tong, but uh, back up and running, sun's out, and uh, doing something about me, head, me head. So that's all good, me head. God, I sound like a right old commoner. Doing something about my brain, don't you know? Um, yeah, it's about a little walk in a place called Ainsford in Kent, which has got uh, a Roman villa, which is rather good. So if ever you're over this way, go there. It's well worth it. If you like a bit of history. Be able to look at that. Look at that. It's a viaduct. It's not an aqueduct. It's a viaduct. Um, quite a few of them around here. In fact, there's so many around here. It's almost like penny sweets, really. You know, they're just lying around everywhere. But uh, what else have I been up to? Oh, I've been making, or well, trying to make, a moustache wax. Experimenting with that, which is quite good. Um, trying to sort out stuff in my life. Trying to be a bit of a better dad and a better husband, because I've been a bit of a twat of late. And uh, I can hear a kestrel. I don't know where he is, but I can hear him. He's walking away, he's found something. Um, it's a bit cold, it's a nice day, but it's a bit cold. But look at that, look at that for a backdrop. <gasps> glorious, G -g -gl glorious, but glorious Kent countryside. Yeah, so, but um, I'll fill you in a bit more about stuff in a minute. I've got to uh, sort out where I'm going and what I'm doing on my walkie. But I'll be back just after this short break. Hello again. So this walk goes from Ainsford, which is a lovely little village. A bit busy though, I must admit. There's a bit of a, it's a just sort of drive through for traffic. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit, it's a quaint village, it's just a bit too busy for traffic. But you know, you go off the beaten path and it's got some lovely stuff around it. Really quaint. Look at the rolling hills of Kent there. moving because behind me is like a swarm of ramblers and you don't want to get caught in a swarm of ramblers oh, they'll be whacking you with their sticks and stomping all over you as they're marching through but uh, yes so I've been listening to some good stuff on the uh, on the radio and on uh, podcasts and stuff I don't know if any of you Just be walking up here and there's some lap winged talking to each other and then they fly sort of quite high up and uh if ever you listen to the uh, adam buxton podcast you might hear him reference techno birds and that's exactly what they sound like i can hear them now it's like mad bleeps and squeaks and they're chatting to each other and they're both saying to each other listen mate i live over here this is my patch bugger off I pay my council tax you know I don't want you around here mate you scum keep to your other side so uh, that's what they do apparently that's what, I've, that's, what, that's what Chris Packham told me when we were down the pub you know but anyway I'll uh hey, what was I saying I was talking about podcasts yeah uh, what was I talking about podcasts yeah I've been listening to uh What's it called? Ecstasy, Battle of Rave. Uh, if you like me, you're in your sort of mid 40s, just turned 45 actually. So, uh, yeah, midlife crisis happening right now. Um, yeah, it's all about the rave scene from the Acid House days in sort of the late 80s, I suppose mid 80s, late 80s. And uh, all the sort of the raves and how ecstasy changed the way things were. Um, for the club scene instead of mindless violence and um, drinking culture it turned it into a happy loving culture loving loving I cannot talk today can't talk I can't talk any day really um, but yeah and uh, it's bloody interesting and I was just thinking back to my days going out raving 
all you people that are listening to this now, all you two or three people, you were there, you know what it's like. Um, but things were changing when we were sort of well into the scene and and gangs were taken over again and it was all, all going a bit sour. But uh, but yeah, it was quite nice to be part of it and listening to a whole documentary about it. It was quite interesting and, you know, I was... Uh, What's good about the documentary is it doesn't paint a rose-tinted spectacle version of it. It sort of tells it how it is. It's, uh, you know, drugs. I mean, I've done quite a few different things in my time. But I've quit in the end because I just thought, mm, yeah, this is going wrong. And it does go wrong for people. Some people it doesn't and it works quite nice and they, they can handle it. Some people can't. And, uh, and it talks about that, how people in the rave scene, how it changed things, the things they saw, you know, the scary side of it. So it was quite a good non-biased view of the rave culture, the good and bad. Um, yeah, really good. Highly recommend it on BBC Sounds, don't you know? Good old Beeb, they're very good at uh, doing documentaries and stuff. I'm just going for a small gap here, so I'm gonna have to breathe in. <sighs> <sighs> See, up there is a place called Eagle Heights and uh, they have lots of rare birds and things like that and uh, and animals. Unfortunately things have been a bit... yeah, I mean, in fact they're over there. Oh, they've got little pods. So uh, that's Eagle Heights. You can't read it because the writing's backwards, isn't it? Oh, silly me. But uh, they do, it's a good day out, and they do flights, they fly eagles, go right miles over Ainsford, and then they call them back, swinging a bit of meat round, and you see them coming from, you know, two, three miles up in the sky, it can see this bit of meat and it comes careering back down, it's amazing, amazing to watch, it's a great place to go, I haven't been there for a while, last time we went there, Lyra had a bit of a meltdown, and then we all had a bit of a meltdown, and then we realised maybe it's not a good place to take a three-year-old child. So if you've got kids a bit older than three, do it. If you haven't, yeah, I'd leave it for a little bit. But today they've got pods. Just notice they've got pods now. You see them? Right. So you can probably stay at Eagle Heights. Diversified, it's great. I love the fact that in this pandemic, people have diversified to survive. And I'm hoping that they keep some of these novel ideas they're having because I think we need to have a bit of that instead of it all being very corporate and you know expensive you know little little coffee shops that spring out of nowhere out of the back of pubs to keep the pub going and they start doing pizzas or homemade cakes and stuff. it's great it's uh it's almost like wartime isn't it really back in the day when they said make do and mend it's gone a bit like that I mean it has worn a bit thin this lockdown I'm not going to lie to you, when it first happened, it was quite novel, quite enjoyed it. Even though I was quite ill for about five weeks, I think I must have had it. Um, but being off, furloughed off work, spending time with the family, going for loads of walks, height of summer, great. So this time around, then this last lockdown, working. Uh, daughter having to be homeschooled by my wife my wife nearly had a nervous breakdown from trying to homeschool a kid I mean we've got one kid fuck knows what it's like when you've got more than one you've got homeschool I mean it's tough but things seem to be going the right way vaccines are happening you know we as a country seem to be doing a lot better than most of Europe at the moment which uh, I'd say it's something to be proud of but really as long as we keep everybody in England, don't let anybody out or in for a bit on holiday, as it were. Um, obviously, I don't mean people who are trying to seek asylum in this country because their countries are being blown to shit. I think that should still happen. We should, you know, help people. But uh, yeah, I think stay home, have holidays at home. I know it's been hard and we've been doing that for about a year, but uh, let's keep the coronavirus at bay, that's what I say. Crowd of at bay, that's what I say. Tagline. See? Say I was oh god, I'm right, it's all wobbly in it, sorry, it's my arms aching. I'm weak. Look, have you seen the countryside? Look at that. It's freaking epic. 
Uh, what else have I been up to? Um, I've been making moustache racks, experimenting. It's been going well. I've trimmed my moustache, as you can tell. It was out here, but uh, I've trimmed it back. I'm, I'm doing um, what's the word? Topiary, I suppose, or pollarding is another another word. Which, uh, if you see them trees that are cut. Everything's cut back, all the branches cut off, and it's like tree stumps and everyone complains. Going, oh my god, what have I done to the trees? They've ruined them. And they haven't. It's called pollarding. It makes the tree come back healthier and stronger, bushier and wiser. Um, so that's what I've been doing. So I've trimmed that back to do that, thicken it up. Uh, and I've been uh, yeah, experimenting with the old wax. Using beeswax, a bit of coconut oil, um, some essence of stuff left and stuff. what was it sweet orange and lemon I did quite a nice one a bit too sweet though and uh, well I had to experiment because it was a bit too soft quite a nice moisturizer for the hands but it weren't very good for the moustache um, if you want a stiff peaks I suppose um, so I did what did I do I used carnauba or um, carnauba gum carnauba oil no carnauba wax which is generally fine in car polish, but it's a natural thing, natural wax. But that, freaking hell, that was like trying to smear super glue on my face. <laughs> Didn't quite work. So I've kind of formulated it now to more parts beeswax, no coconut oil, um, a bit of petroleum, and uh, like Vaseline, as uh, for those of you who don't know what this is, you probably do, and uh, a splash of carnauba wax, and then some. Uh, like tea tree oil or something like that, something to make it smell nice. It's working quite well. I'm going to experiment with a big batch, a proper batch, when I get it right down to how I exactly want it. Stick some labels on it, start selling it. So any of you out there who uh, want to wax your moustaches or, you know, turn your arm hair into plaits, I don't know. If you've got, if you've got unruly hair that needs sorting out with a bit of wax, I'm your guy and it'll be cheap ish I've got to cover costs and I've got to make some profit you know I'm hoping to become a millionaire off the back of moustache wax um God, the sun's coming out it's lovely so I've been doing that um I've been working god I hate working can, can I just get paid to do this to walk from A to B you know look at the countryside and go yeah that's the countryside it's great pay me thank you yeah, I'd like it, I would like it, but no, I've got to work because I've got to earn a living to put a roof over our heads and food on the table. But I'm gonna try and subsidize our wages with stuff, things, maybe selling stuff online and that, get some extra cash in, try and get a house somewhere. That's what we want. Um, other news, oh, right, you've got to keep this to yourselves, right? You can't be telling anyone. All right, don't tell my daughter, but we're going to get a cat. Yeah, it's a house cat. It's meant for indoors, doesn't like the outdoors. But we're getting a cat, hopefully. Yeah, it's so all the, the wheels are in motion and we should be hopefully seeing Denzel. Great name for a cat. And he's got a moustache. <laughs> um, and he has, yeah, he's got a moustache. Um, and he's a ragdoll, ragdoll cat. And uh, He's lovely. My daughter doesn't know. We're not going to tell her. We're just going to bring the cat home and then say, there's a cat. It's your cat. It's our cat. It's the fourth person in the house. It's going to be great. It's going to make such a difference. I hope it's going to make a difference. Give my lovely daughter some focus and uh, something to, to kind of steer her away from Roblox because if any of you parents out there have got children that play Roblox, Christ the white, that game is like crack cocaine to kids. And when, when you don't let them have it, they turn into assholes. And uh, yeah, it's caused many a big argument and a, a big old shouty match between us and our daughter. And then we decided, right, we're gonna cut it right down. We said to my daughter, if you're good and you don't kick off and you eat your you eat your greens 
then uh, you can have a bit of roadblocks for an hour or two and, and we're doing that we've kind of relaxed a little bit lately and we've noticed it's uh, having adverse effects so we're going to tighten the belt again but that has worked but yeah roadblocks i mean it's it's fun but it's a bit mental and you can't listen to it when it's on and your kid's playing it and she's got her headphones on as well we stick headphones on but that doesn't really work she just shouts all the time so you have to go and move to another village to get away from the noise but uh i'm hoping the cat's gonna sort of steer away from that a bit she's gonna look after him he's very fluffy big ragdolly cat but uh but yeah don't tell anyone i don't want her to know just me and uh me and the wife keeping it a secret we're gonna go and visit it soon in may and uh check it out and sort of get vetted you know are we suitable and then hopefully uh yeah, little dens all be coming in. I'm well ahead of the uh, the rambling association. It's good. It's a good thing to have rambling association, but when you've got about forty people bowling down a lane, it's a little bit annoying. Right, I'm gonna sign out. See you in a bit. Bye bye. Somebody else I've been listening to on Audible, Philip Pullman series. I mean, you've all heard the Dark Materials and all that. I mean, that's where our daughter got her name from, really, Lyra. And she's very much like the lead character in that book. But another series of books, I think before, that come out before The Dark Materials, was the Sally Lockhart series. Um, incredibly good books, read by Anton Lesser, who is superb at doing um, the, the narrating. Very good. And flows in and out of the different characters effortlessly. Effort oh, Jesus Christ effortlessly jesus christ i shouldn't keep i keep saying jesus christ why am i saying that shut up tobe right start again anyway he does a really good job and uh they're really good books i'll tell you what i like about them is they're kind of based on history real events real things that happened um, i mean the lead character is a woman and the struggle she has as a woman i mean in one of the books um her what yeah, so i'm talking about yeah the sally lockhart character in one of the uh, the episodes of the book she gets well not, not her identity stolen but uh, somebody basically forges a marriage certificate to her and they're trying to take away her child and they do take away all her money and everything else and that's what it was like back then and uh, and there's still some of it. it was a bit like that now but she loses everything because she is married her the man has absolutely everything and uh, yeah, and she has to try and fight to get that back. And because she's a woman, um, back in the 1800s or early 19th century, I suppose, she uh, she struggles. You know, all these obstacles are in front of her because she's a woman. The fact that she owns her own business is frowned upon. Um, you know, she's called out for being a prostitute and things like that when she's not, just because you know men are coming to visit her but it's men are coming to visit her on business you know she's a finance she deals with people's finances and stuff like that and uh yeah so it's got loads of stuff like that in it loads of history it uh it delves into the whole jewish immigration into into the country and how they were preyed upon by people that would meet them at the docks and then sell them um rent in properties at extortionate prices and then keep putting it up and up and so they could never really afford to to kind of live they would stir up hatred in the papers um yeah the pogroms which was a russian thing come over to england where the um hatred for for the jewish were was put into the press sort of saying that they you know they eat your babies and you know they're unwashed and you know this that and the other they're taking your jobs and it was all false and it still happens to this day that's what's you read these books and they're no different than a lot of what's happening now and it's quite sad really to think about that but it's well worth it if you can check them out or even read the books read uh, the lockhart series it's four books really good well worth I it to mention where i've just been waffling on is uh lullinson roman villa yeah. lullinson roman villa AD 80 to AD 90, so proper old, but really good. They've covered it, so you can go in, you can look at it. It's very good. This road's so busy, I'm on this road. 
It's a little country lane and it's like the M25. But hey ho, anyway, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, check that out. I mean, it's got loads of history. Um, you've got the castle down the road from London, the Rome Villa. Um, you've got the World Garden, big old, uh, big old stately home with a World Garden in it that the sun started when he, uh, I think he was orchid hunting in the jungles of Peru or something, and then uh, he got uh, he got held hostage and had the idea whilst he was being held hostage. And in true British fashion, when he got home, he went and did it. And it's, it's kind of saved their stately home, really. Check this out. Look, look, look. Here we go, here we go. Ta-da! Look at that. Whoa, viaduct porn. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's a beautiful bit of architecture. Yeah, there's one right near my house. And an old ancient chimney. 1881. I don't know when these viaducts were built in the 1800s, but pretty good. See, hello, check that out. Pretty impressive, isn't it? The engineering. I quite like Victorian engineering. I mean, it's a little bit brutalist in places, but it's got form and function. But they like little, there's little bits that they put on that are amazing. Oh, there's a techno bird tweeting. Here's a car. Ooh. Echo. But, uh, yeah, they're just the same about Victorian architecture. It had function, but they put little kind of turrets and things on it, or, you know, little little flourishes that kind of make it aesthetic. Oh, Jesus, here we go again. Aesthetically pleasing. I've just noticed as well, bloody cars. Can't get away from the bloody things. That um, whoever owns the land underneath here started to plant um, tulips and stuff. It's quite nice. Look, all this, all that, it goes all the way underneath. And uh, they're planting tulips. Yeah, what a place, eh? It's lovely around here. Oh, there's some duckies. Look, I'll show you the ducks. If I can. Where are you? Oh, there we go. Look. <laughs> Good impression, I know. David Attenborough, eat your heart out. Naturalist. Oh, a little robin just fluttered past me then. It's lovely over here. I can't wait to get my dad back over. And if any of you Canadians are ever coming over, you can go for some lovely walks around here. And hopefully the pubs will be open. You can have a lovely drinky in an old style pub. It's like a constable painting, isn't it? Look at that. Whee. Absolutely stunning. Anyway, I'm going to head back to the car. And if I think of anything else to talk bollocks about, I'll maybe put it in the video. What the frick, you know? That was a duck. God, that scared the shit out of me. Duckies. It's my mate, ducks. There's fish in there and all sorts. Anyway.